What's up, guys? <laughs> He's so excited. Yes. <laughs> It's uh, it's been a while since we've uh, since we've t you know given any update on a uh, project Exoset. Just a little update after the the frame got powder coated and everything. But we're finally ready to actually start assembling this thing. Uh, the last few months we've uh, besides you know editing episodes of the Slip Angle that we shot, which all you summer, all should have watched by now. Yeah, if you haven't, we aired the whole 2021 season. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So besides that, we've been doing a lot of like a lot of the things that take a lot a long time. Like uh, we had all the hardware zinc plated. The for, boring stuff. Yep, uh, I, I spent so many hours, you know, slaving, sanding and rust bulleting control arms. And even though we had a powder coater that yeah. you, you could have just included that with. Yeah, it, would, it was it was easy for me to bring it home and do it, do it from home. You just admit it. You yeah. wanted to play with it. I, I get did. it. I, I get yeah, it. I, I want to make everything nice. So um, we have this thing all laid out right now. We just figured we do, you know, show everybody like uh, all the all the components. We're we getting have. ready to start the assembly. Yeah. yeah, we're getting ready. This is the fun stuff that yeah. everybody wants to see. Yeah, all clean parts, beautiful new parts, zinc plated hardware. Like, so let's just start from the, the front. So front sub frame is powder coated. Yep. Matthew did the control arms and rust bullet. They all have fresh energy polyurethane suspension. Yep. We rebuilt the hubs, new bearings. Yep. Um, then we have our Paco Motorsports. Yep. Long travel rally suspension setup. Yeah, pumped about that. I'm pumped to put all that stuff on. Uh, um, oh God, tell yeah. them about the frame color. Uh, frame color, <laughs> it's, it's a bit green. We just kind of picked the swatch from a, a catalog and said this one looks okay yeah it's kind of like a john deere yep but like a little bit of more pizzazz to it, a little sesson you can really see a, a, you know in person you see the yellow in the green a lot it's more a little bit more yellow yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like it i kind of wanted a cool green but then we didn't want to step on our friend thomas's <laughs> exoset who's actually filming us right now if you guys remember his video we re reviewed his turbocharged exoset <laughs> So I kind of wanted a darker green. We had to pick a different green. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted like a almost almost British racing green, but he brought up a good point. It would have been very dark. I think at, at night. Yeah, because you don't you don't have any yeah. body panels. It's literally yeah. just the frame. So, yeah. Anyways, it, it looks great. Mm -hmm. Our good friends at Paint and Powder Works in New Britain, they they took care of us. They did an excellent job, and we're very happy for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, frame looks as good as it's going to get. We got our cage on here. Yep. Um, Let's talk about, let's what go else? to, let's, let's just work our way around. Yeah, let's show the rear, the rear, rear subframes powder coated as well, as, as well as the PPF. Um, we didn't, all I did was uh, rust bullet the, uh, the drive shaft. And I know what everybody's gonna say is like, you shouldn't have put like really thick paint on a drive shaft because it's balanced, but it actually, rust bullet is one of my favorite coatings because it spreads, it spreads very, very, very thin. I think I only dipped the paintbrush like three times to paint the entire drive shaft. So I don't think it's going to throw the balance off. My concrete floors in here are actually coated in rust bullet. Yeah. It's probably cancer causing as all hell. Yeah. I mean, it smells atrocious. Let's just put it out there, <laughs> but it creates a shell around whatever <laughs> you put it on. And, um, I, I, it's my favorite rust coating. Um, yeah. Better than POR, we'll say that. And no, we're not sponsored by any of these guys, so just uh, take that for what it's worth. Yep. Let's talk about our, our rally wheel and tire suspension yeah, uh, package Young here. Youngblood wheels. Youngblood. Yep. So those are actually Spec Miata size wheels that they make for, for Spec Miata. They're 15 by 7 with a 35 offset. 25. Or, 25 oh, we got offset. 25 on these ones. Yep. Sorry. Which is what, what you need for an exo set. You really need some aggressive offset to... Yep. And we have, we have wheel spacers too that we might be throwing these on. We didn't want too wide of a wheel for the, the rally stage yep. tires, which are on there. We will be running a street wheel and tire setup on this, and that will be probably 15 by 8 with a 25, yeah. maybe an RPF1 or yeah, something. Yeah, what are we going to do for those wheels? I think Quint. RPF1 yeah. is nice and light. Yeah, but what, what about those, uh, remember we were, the other wheel thing we got going on? Oh, yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> we, might, we might be uh, cooking something up behind the scenes for wheels. Yep. So. We'll announce that as we get closer to the development. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so here's the rear Paco setup. They give you an extended, um, I guess what would you call that? That's not this really is the top upper, up, it's upper a shock, shock mount. Shock yeah. mount. Which actually bolts, you know, above the frame, which we, we showed. Did we show? No, I don't think we showed. I don't know if we did. Yeah. Well, we're showing it again. Yeah. It's a really cool kit. They, they give you a new upper A-arm for the rear. Yep. 
and use a factory lower and then we have the adapters for the lower shock too, yep, which are already, already installed. Yeah, and it actually inverts the um, the shock in the back. Mm -hmm. the, the mounts are inverted. Yeah. Um, yeah. Differential. Differential. Yep. This is a four four point three Torsen. Yep. So this came with the donor chassis. Yeah. It looked okay. Had some water in it, but there was a lot of gear oil in there, so we just cleaned it all up, put it back together, resealed it. The trans. This is the five speed from my ninety nine Miata before I did the six speed conversion on it. This was painted also by our friends at Paint and Powder Works. It wasn't powder coated, it was actually painted. Um, still looks pretty good. It looks really good. <laughs> yep, this paint is great. It's three yeah. stage. Yep, and the engine's from same car, right? The engine, this is my original NB engine. So I, I put a 2002 block in it. Um, and this is actually my original factory BP4W cylinder head. Before I like did the shaving, I just picked up a, like milling the head. I picked up a spare head just in case like this, the whole idea didn't work. Um, and I did it to that one. So this is the original uh, short block, I guess you'd say, from my 99 Miata. We're gonna breathe yep. new life into this car. This is very low mileage setup. It's only got like 50 something thousand miles on them. So yeah, it should last a while. If yep. you, depending on how you know mild or extreme we want to go with the turbo setup yep. and tuning. And then we have a flying Miata. Uh, turbo manifold, what is it, a T25 on here? Uh, it's the or Garrett GT2560, so it's a, a standard like GT28 type turbo. Yep, should be plenty responsive. Yep. Um, we're just gonna boost it to whatever it makes for power. Yep. 250, 250, 250, 250, 260 would be nice. Yeah, 250 horsepower, and I'm guessing it's probably gonna be somewhere around 1,500 pounds. She should yeah. move, she should move pretty good. Yeah, what did yours make, Tom? 240. 240. Yeah. Okay. And you're and Tom's on the old Lime Rock configuration. That was the fastest car we tested. Yep. We didn't test it on the new setup yet, but. And you even drove that thing on the street a little bit. <laughs> Remember that time you were doing donuts in your oh, driveway yeah. and driving? Oh, up there, it was, an Exo set is a, is, a, is a riot of a vehicle to to uh, pilot. I don't think I've ever driven anything quite as like rowdy as one of these, as far as just like a hooligan mobile. Cause it's like, it really does feel like go-kart-esque, mm -hmm. but with like real suspension compliance. I can't wait to see how this pans out with the rally kit. Yeah, I know. It should be like pretty supple and like. It should it should do fairly well. Yep. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so we're just gonna start putting this thing together. Yeah, we'll, we'll stop and yeah. we'll highlight the important yeah. notes. I mean, if we try to film every little thing, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a 10 day years. long video. <laughs> so. Well, yeah, Project Exocet is resuming, mm -hmm. and we'll be we'll be piggybacking content with this, and then we got some more stuff coming up for Project AP1S2000. All right. Yeah, that's true. So All let's right. let's begin. Yeah, we're gonna get our hands dirty now. Okay. All right. So here is a quick progress update. We did get the, uh, the rear subframe bolted up. We got the upper and lower control arms as well as the, uh, the Paco kit bolted up. Uh, we cannot bolt the spindles up, up to the uh, lower control arms yet. We're still waiting on those really long bolts. For the bottom, they're, they're coming back from zinc plating. Um, we were able to 
get the diff and the PPF installed. Uh, we figured it'd be a good idea now to, uh, to bolt the PPF up to the diff before putting it in. And we're debating the next move to take. I think we're gonna actually bolt up the front subframe to the, uh, to the chassis, and then we'll just drop the engine and transmission in. We'll just have to loosen up the, uh, the PPF in the rear and uh, you know just kind of wiggle the transmission in there. Still waiting on the upper control arm bolts as well. The, the really long bolts that needed to be zinc plated took a little bit longer because they didn't fit in the normal, I guess, buckets that they use for, for zinc plating. So they had to do that a different way. We're still waiting on those. Um, so yeah, next we're just gonna bolt up the, the front subframe to the chassis and then start putting the control arms on with the eccentrics. And uh, we have to do the front ball joints, spindles, and front suspension. That's it for today. We ran out of time today. Um, we did get quite a bit done. Um, like I said, we were still waiting on the uh, the longer upper control arm bolts. We've just got these mocked up with other bolts. Um, and we got our control arms, our, our lower control arms on. Uh, we got the suspension set up. Um, I'm gonna have to double check the, the manual from Paco Motorsports just to make sure we have everything oriented properly. But um, front subframe is bolted. It's actually torqued down to the frame. Everything lines up. Um, one of the things I was a little bit worried about, you know, doing our own frame repair um, after and after powder coating and cleaning everything, you know, you just, it's just one of those things I was worried about. It's nice to see it all lined up perfectly. Um, next time we are going to hopefully be getting the rear spindles on with the axles and we can actually get this thing on some wheels and, and get a better idea what this is gonna look like with the, with the wheel and tire set up. So I'm really excited. Tom O'Rudd, uh, thank you very much for, uh, for helping me out today, um, getting all this stuff bolted up. This is, uh, this is we were pretty productive today. I'm, I'm uh, pretty happy with how uh, it's all looking. Um, yeah, and what else, what else, Rudd? Nothing? <laughs> He's going like this to me right now, so I think, I think we're good. Um, yeah, check out our webinars too. We got, we, we got a lot of seats to the left in a lot of our webinars for, uh, you can win some performance car parts. Uh, all you have to do is buy a, a seat to the, to the webinar, come in, talk with me and Quinn for a while, and then uh, the, a winner will get the, uh, the prize at the, end of the, at the end of the webinar. Check out our website. I also take photos too. Check out our website for that too. If you've been to lo these local Lime Rock events, I've taken photos at these events and I probably have them up there. Um, they're really cheap. I sell them, you know, it's less than like a, a cup of coffee from Starbucks for a digital copy. So yeah, check that out and uh, tune in next time when we uh, have some further progress on Project Exoset. That's it. Done.